Hey guys, welcome back to Genius Learning. All right, so I wanna continue on vectors and how we're gonna be using them to solve our projectile motion problems. Uh, addition of vectors and we have here vector equations. So let's take a look. All right, so in the previous one, we discussed magnitude. And so let's take a look here. If I have uh, this notation, okay, we have V, uh, which is this representative of a vector, you know, velocity. Uh, with these, with this notation here, we got, let's say, negative 2 and 3, okay? What this means here is, let's, let's put this as X and this as Y, right? And so we got negative 2, 3, okay? If we want to find the magnitude of this, right, which is this notation here, we do the square root of negative 2 squared plus 3 squared, which is going to equal square root of 13. All right, and so what this means is the length here of this vector. All right, that vector there is uh, V with those brackets on the side, okay? Um, which is really saying that this vector here and this vector here, here, right, are the ones that make up this long one, right? So it's made up of negative two in this direction, All right? We got negative two here, and we go up three because this represents X and Y. All right, so in another example, let's look at this and this, okay? So I wanna break up something into components, right? And you're gonna be doing that a lot. So this is a concept that you really need to understand. So let's draw a vector. Okay, we're gonna draw this vector here. Uh, we're just gonna label it vector initial. So I put zero, which is means not or whatever, but you can write initial if you want. Vector, so this is the initial velocity you gave something. Let's say it's, it's a ball or something like that. And so we're gonna write the same one here. So this is the angle that you launched it at. All right, now let's break it up into components. And so we know that this initial velocity is made up of two components. It's made up of a component in the x direction, so v initial x. And we don't need to write the vector notation on top because now it's specific. It's telling us that it's initial in the x direction. And we also have v initial in the y and so we don't need a vector notation because it's specific to the y and so in this instance we need a vector notation because uh, that tells us magnitude and direction but when we when we represent them specifically in x and y then we don't need to write it and so this is what we have okay but what are the values of v not x and v not y all right, so let's take a look over here. So in order to break it up into components, we need some trig. Okay, so we have the angle, and so opposite over hypotenuse, right, is gonna give us V naught sine of theta for this side right here. Okay, and remember what I said about vectors, that you can move them, and so this vector here is the same thing as this vector here, which is the same thing as the length of this vector here. So what we're gonna do is V naught Y is equal to this right here, V naught sine of theta, okay? And for this side here, 
we use the angle and we do adjacent over hypotenuse, which is cosine. So adjacent over hypotenuse, we have phi naught cosine theta. All right, and that is V naught X. Okay, so we have this and we have this as our components for the X and the Y. All right, so let's see, let's see um, some examples, see how we can use these. All right, so let's say we have Let's say we have uh, a triangle, okay? This is gonna be a vector triangle, and we have displacement vector is gonna be equal to velocity initial vector times time plus one half a vector t squared. Okay, this is a vector equation and it looks like this over here. You're gonna have the displacement vector. Uh, we'll say it's in the X for now. And you're gonna have a velocity times time. So this vector here. And then lastly, you're gonna have this one here. One half A T squared. Okay, so we need to understand this triangle. We need to understand this vector equation so that way we can do these projectile motion problems easily. All right, so this is a vector equation and you can see it's represented by arrows. So what we wanna do is understand what the vector notation means. All right, so this specific formula means two things. Okay, or better yet, it represents the x and the y displacement. Okay, so the displacement vector, this side here can either be the change of x, or this side here could be the change in y. That's the displacement. Okay, equals now the velocity initial times time. So the velocity initial in the x direction times time. And on this side, we have the velocity initial in the y direction times time. So you see how they're specific to their own uh, variable. So x has all the x involved and y has all the y's involved. And then lastly, we have the acceleration vector. So plus one half acceleration in the x t squared and on this side we have plus one half acceleration in the y t squared okay so you see how this index shows that the this acceleration is only in the x this velocity initial is only in the x and the displacement which is so we don't get it confused is final minus initial so position final position initial which is what this means velocity initial in the x t plus one half a x t squared and the same here so we have y final minus y initial is equal to v naught y t plus one half a in the y t squared okay so we need, to, we need to look at what we already know from breaking things up into vectors in that V naught Y, right, is actually V naught sine theta. Okay, so we can change that. Let's, let's rewrite this. Y final minus Y initial is equal to V naught sine theta, right, because we know that in the Y direction, the velocity in the Y direction has the velocity initial times sine of the angle it was launched at. And so we could represent this as that, and we write everything else the same for now, okay? And so working only on that side, 
let's look at that a y for a second okay so acceleration in the y now specifically for the y direction all right if we take a look here let's say we launch uh this ball again you know and this is the trajectory here okay this is x hat this is the x final this is where it lands all right so acceleration in the y what does that mean as this ball is flying through the air right it's experiencing uh, vectors that affect it in the x direction and in the y direction right because gravity wants to push it down every step of the way right that's why the ball comes back down and in the x direction right it has some motion because you applied a velocity initial right with the vector symbol that represents both okay but in the y direction you have an acceleration going downward at all times it's called gravity on earth so gravity is negative 9.8 meters per second squared so meters per second squared is really like saying meters per second per second so it's traveling or it's pushing down the ball. So gravity is pushing down the ball at 9.8 meters per second every second. Okay, if that, that makes a little more sense to you. So, and it's negative because going downward is negative, upward is positive. And so this acceleration in the Y is the same thing as saying gravity. And so we're gonna write everything again, except we're gonna change this. All right, we have one half, and we're gonna put the negative outside already because this negative is to show that this gravity is negative 9.8. So we don't put negative 9.8 inside the G value, we already just take it out. So we can just put 9.8 in here, okay? And so V naught sine theta T, and we have y final minus y initial. All right, so again, you put 9.8 in here, and that's it. You don't put negative 9.8 and a negative here and cancel out. It's just one negative, 9.8, and that's it. Okay, so let's leave this equation like that. Okay, so this is kinematic equation for displacement in the y. But we started off with this vector equation which is displayed here as a vector triangle all right and now let's work on the x value the x displacement okay so we did this is the change in x so the final minus the initial equals the velocity initial in the x times time plus one half acceleration in the x time squared okay we know this velocity initial in the x is v naught cosine, right? So let's change that. So the left side stays the same. This becomes v naught cosine theta, right? Which is the velocity in the x direction, the initial velocity in the x. t plus one half ax t squared. All right, and just like for the y, let's take a look at this ax, the acceleration in the x value. All right, so again, looking at another example, let's look here, All right? We're gonna launch the ball. That's the trajectory. We have X, this is Y, zero, this is V initial, okay? At some angle, we're launching this ball. Okay, and so now we need to understand why this acceleration in the X is gonna be zero. Unless there is some type of acceleration constantly applied to it, like, um, it, you know, a more complicated situation than this. And, and so just for simplicity, let's understand why this is zero. If, the, if I throw the ball, 
right? And this is the trajectory. So the ball is slowing down. If I launch the ball, let's say at five meters per second, okay? The ball is never gonna go faster than that value, okay? Because as soon as I let it go, gravity wants to push it down, which makes it come back to the ground, right? And as it's moving forward with the velocity I gave it, right, it's slowing down because, you know, there's wind resistance and there's drag and there's particles and, there's, you know, all sorts of things in the air that slow it down. That's why it stops. So that's why it, it, it comes here. And so to understand, we have an initial velocity, but we don't have an increase in velocity. And so acceleration is the change in velocity over time. And we don't have that. We don't have a velocity that's changing. We just have the initial velocity that was given and then it starts to slow down. So if it was increasing, so the derivative of velocity would mean that we're increasing in velocity. We're taking the derivative of something. We wanna see what's happening at a later time and then a later time and then a later time. And in those intervals, the velocity would be increasing. That would mean you have an acceleration, but we don't have that. When you launch a ball up, it wants to come back down and it wants to slow down. It does not want to get faster, okay? So this acceleration in the X is gonna be zero. All right, so now our final equation for the X displacement is gonna be V naught cosine theta times time. All right, so we're gonna leave these two equations here and we're gonna use them in the next video. Try to understand a little bit more about these two concepts if, if you don't, if it wasn't too clear, why the acceleration in the X is zero Okay, because this object is slowing down, try to understand where it comes from. So the derivative of velocity means we have an acceleration. All right, and also negative 9.8. So gravity is always applied to an object that's in free fall. All right, so try to understand some of these concepts so that way in the next videos we can move forward with some examples.